and welcome to this episode of Femme Fatalities, a podcast dedicated to the wonderful women of Mortal Kombat. My name is David. My name is Chris. Finish him, Wormiskirsch. Oh man, have you uh, have you watched that at all? No, I yeah, haven't. I uh, I made the. I don't know if it's a mistake yet. I chose to watch most of it today while Harlow is napping and. I will say with my expectations being absolutely like underneath the ground low, we're kind of like breaching the surface. Mm. So they weren't sub zero. Uh, <laughs> well, technically they were, <laughs> but no, nah, it's all right. It's not my thing, but I'm not here to trash anyone who, who does like it, but we are saved by the Belial and atrocious Ultraman podcast, the show where we only have three minutes to talk about an episode of Ultraman. And we are starting a new show today. What are we doing, Chris? Well, it's not Mortal Kombat, so I just had to throw out all my notes. Instead, uh, I pulled sorry. out my notes for Ultraman Ginga. Yeah, he's uh, not in Mortal Kombat. This uh, two diametrically opposed franchises. Yeah, right <laughs> that would definitely be kind of a tonal shift. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's putting it lightly. <laughs> but uh before we do get into this new series, Chris, could you uh, start us out with some house cleaning here? Yes. So we have had some reviews that we are so thankful for. Both of these having names that I know what they stand for, that when I read them, <laughs> I'm not making a big fool of myself, just a small one. Or you're not reading the review of the guest that we have on, and I didn't tell you that. <laughs> yeah, well, certainly that we've had plenty of surprises on the show, and it won't be our last. Um, so we have Mel0925, sweet and pithy. Three minutes is the perfect amount of time to review it each episode and still leave you enticed to go back and watch it. The show is funny and enlightening. I always learn something new. Same. Uh, really love the format. I'm really, I'm really glad that people are kind of catching on with that three minute thing. It is, it it is perfect. There's stuff that we kind of sometimes we don't want to say. There's stuff that we some episodes where we don't quite make it, but yeah, I think it's really pushed us. I'm glad everyone's jumping on. And then we have Terry twenty ninety nine. Um, finally, an excuse to watch some Ultraman. I know you've been uh, sitting with all those Blu-ray discs on your shelf, just waiting for the perfect chance to pop them open. So we are happy. That's actually what he that. says. Um, <laughs> oops. Um, man, I'm psychic. <laughs> uh, I really dig this show's format. It, it works surprisingly well. Yeah, tell us about it. And keeps things moving. David and Chris also crack me up with their banter and are even enlightening at times. Um, I love this like um, feeling of like, hmm. Like I have a couple of actuallys in there, actually enlightening. Um, get excited every time a new episode drops. I got to give them props for finally making me watch them my Ultraman Blu-rays. Told you. <laughs> yeah. As you can tell, Chris does not really read our notes, but I, I will, in his defense, I did make the outline today. So. Well, it's always more fun when we all experience these together. And um, wraps it up saying, this has been an entertaining and interesting companion piece to my Ultraman journey so far. So we're thankful to have y'all along as we go on this ourselves. So I just want to give a special shout out to Terry, though. Uh, he actually moved over from Kaiju Apostle Podcast and started listening to this show as well. Also left a review over there. So Terry, it's been a minute, but really do appreciate you sticking around. Yeah. And then Terry, tell us what other DVDs are gathering dust on your shelf. Because when it's time for show number three, we'll choose that to give you more, more reason to watch the DVDs you already own. Uh, I thought we were doing Common Rider. I <laughs> hope Terry has a lot of Common Rider DVDs on his shelf. Then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then uh, listener feedback. So I had asked a question on Twitter before we really just kind of kicked the bucket there about thoughts regarding Ginga because. I really do feel like this is one of the most unfairly maligned series in the franchise. So I was Sad. really curious to hear what people thought. And I got a couple emails here. Uh, they both were well written, but very long. So I had to kind of trim them down. Um, so I let both of them know I'd be doing that in advance, but still. Uh, so we had Adam here. Uh, so he said, hey, guys, I saw you were asking about Ginga and Ginga S. And having watched both last December, I thought I'd share my thoughts. 
I really enjoyed both shows, but overall, I would say I like Ginga S more. But Ginga was a fun show, and knowing that the budget was low, it made more sense why they only have two fight locations. Okay. Also, Thank having you. a vinyl Good Taro be a character was hilarious. By the end of the series, I was really curious on how this was going to lead into Ginga S, but I'll let you guys get to that. Overall, I think Ginga was fun. Nothing mind-blowing or amazing, but a fun time. And then Jacob said, To me, Ginga is an ultra series in its purest form, and a wonderful return to this world of giants after being gone for so long. I absolutely love its overarching theme of dreams. I think it delivered a really impactful message to viewers of all ages. Ginga showed how dreams impact our lives in all stages of human development. We saw members of the cast with clear dreams in mind, those who felt their dreams were pointless to chase after, and even those who may even be unsure of their place in the world. And yet, Ultraman Ginga made it very clear that no one was at fault, how sometimes failure is a part of life, but it is vital to continue to aim for the future because light will always be there. Overall, I really think Ultraman Ginga gets vastly unnecessary hate, especially from the fan base outside of Japan. It is a fantastic story with lots of soul and a brilliant message if one takes the time to think about it. That's a pretty much as good review as he can get for a show. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, you know, it's he's not wrong. I mean, so first of all, we know Cal Newport hates Ultraman Ginga because they talk about dreams and he's always big on like you shouldn't just, you know, put your whole life around dreams. Right. I'm on a Cal Newport kick right now. <laughs> but I I don't I, I do love the fact that I mean, if you obviously we're going to get into the show, but I think Jacob really hits on a lot of things why I really like the show and i've also i'm gonna confess since i'm the one who edits the podcast i listen to me talk see even right there i listen to the things i say and i'm like god i am horrible at grammar when it comes to words i choose and some of the word but it's like it all makes sense in context but i was like if my english teachers ever listen to me in my podcast they would just flunk me this isn't English. creative writing this is creative talking yeah I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'm alone here, but like when I write, like I never have those issues. But for some reason, when I talk, I just end up need a mouth a mess with my grammar. Yeah, I need Grammarly for my brain. <laughs> I think that's just an English degree. <laughs> yeah, I, I have one. That's the problem. <laughs> <What? laughs> oh, maybe it was a public speaking class I took. It's like, yeah, hey, I can talk in public, but I sound horrible. Okay, so Chris. <laughs> Do you want to go ahead and uh, read the show summary? Yes. I. This comes from the back of the Blu-ray case. And so it's guided by a mysterious vision which appeared in his dream. 17-year-old high school boy Hikaru returns to his hometown during summer vacation after traveling around with his musician parents. There he meets Ultraman Taro, the 53 meters tall super warrior, who, but now reduced to the size of figurines called spark dolls by the Dark Force. Hikaru is told his he is the selected one and that he must find the Ginga spark and use it with the spark doll to transform into the gigantic Ultraman Ginga to save the earth. All right. So time for our episode discussions, Chris, let's go ahead and do this. Yes. So we only did six this time. So uh, the first one is town of falling stars. High school student Higuru Raido returns to his hometown after seven years of adventures overseas and encounters the mysterious doll of Ultraman Taro who can talk. Guided by fate, Higuru becomes the gigantic hero Ultraman Ginga to fight evil forces. I forgot how short it is. Let me hit the button really quick. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. All right, Chris, that opening track. I've got to hear your thoughts. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was dying. I, I've heard people talk about it before. And I think if we, we've even talked about it on the show, but man, I was, yeah. was kind of digging it. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, the music in this show, you know, it, it's it's even with like the ending track. I mean, normally I would skip to the next episode, but I'm just sitting there and I'm like, nope, I love Starlight. It's such a good song. Oh, I know. I think that's what it's called. The nice thing about watching these on DVD is it requires me to get off my butt to turn these off. So I'm like jamming, listening. <laughs> so I have no problem with it. Yeah. So so how do you feel with this different tone right off the bat? I mean, it's not, you know, I know we've talked about like tonal whiplash and, you know, 
all these different things. But just by and large, it is an entirely different show. So entirely different. Going show. from the original to this, like, what are your thoughts? Because I mean, this is such a good way to, I think, to start this series. Yeah, and I'm really like the way that these are juxtaposed now in my mind. Whether or not, whether or not anyone connects these two, like it is in my mind because this is the order that we watched it in. It really mm-hmm. was the most interesting thing is to see how the franchise can support such different uh, gimmicks, such different concepts within itself. And it doesn't feel like I'm too far away from the original series. Like when I watch Star Wars, sometimes my guide is, can I imagine this happening in the same galaxy Luke Skywalker of A New Hope lived in? But I can see this happening. Like the world that Hayata lives in is the world that this can take place in. And I think that's a real, like, I really love that about this show. That the the concept of a talking doll, and listen, I mean, <laughs> we all I I've been so tempted by the vinyl toys for Zenkaiger and also just um some of the Ultraman ones. So the fact that a whole show is kind of based around these, that's so funny. I don't even yeah. care if this is like eighties He Man like toy commercial. That's so funny, and it works so freaking well that it doesn't bother it me does. one bit. It does. And like we said last time, for people who get upset about that, you're ignoring, even in the original, they were marketing, they were marketing the toys, they were marketing Ultraman masks. I mean, that's just, that's how it is. But yeah, I mean, just this first episode right off the bat, it just sets the tone for such a wonderful show. I mean, Taro is just, he's such a, a pleasure to watch. And it just, I love how like, you know, Taro's talking uh, you know, to Hikaru, and he's like, "Here's all the super plot narration." And he's like, "Huh? How's this doll talking?" Like, you're, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're focusing right. on the wrong thing here. Um, but what I love is that these episodes seem to buy, seem to go by so much faster. You know, like by yes. like I binge like three oh, gosh, in one yes. night, and I'm like, I'm done. and yeah, and that's nothing against the old show. It's just it's a different pacing, mm-hmm. and it, I think it makes for more enjoyable watch sometimes oh yeah Mm -hmm. all right episode number two a midsummer night's dream (laughs) hikaru shares his secret with misuzu his childhood friend of being ultraman ginga however the evil monster kimer now sets his eyes on misuzu can hikaru keep the girl from being harmed (laughs) I meant to say this with the last episode, but I love that right off the bat, there's no surprise. Someone knows that he's Ultraman. Yeah. Well, they can't waste time. They don't have a lot of episodes here. No, they don't. They don't. But I mean, it's not the first show that that's happened, but I just, I love the, just again, the differences here. But, <laughs> oh, so I had made a comment before about how I was like, it seemed jarring that, you know, uh, Kichi Hasegawa, who had run, you know, Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, and Ultraman Nexus. I was like him writing uh, and SSSS Gridman, uh, also writing this, but watching this one, the writing is so good. So I'm like, okay, watching more of those shows closely, I could see where his fingerprints are. Like my favorite line is, do you want to know? It'll be a long story. Uh, Good night. (laughs) You know, just like lines like that. And oh my gosh, flirting. (laughs) The biker is ridiculous. I um I was gonna make this comment later, but the writing is so much like funnier, um, I think at times. Like just yeah. kind of off the wall corny. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. And that that so Hasegawa is actually like the main writer for this series. Um he did actually write the script to the first two episodes and I think the last one as well. But you know, he kind of looked over the whole show itself. But yeah, it's it's such a weird episode. I mean not only that, but like the the guy who becomes the Kemer, like he has the bike inside of Kemer. Did you notice that? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm like, why, why did that get included too? <laughs> yeah, I did have him on. This was the one from Ultra Q, right? Yeah, yeah, one yeah. It's like, hey, I know this guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, this is. Uh, I've never heard Jasper laugh more than this episode. Whenever uh, Kemer gets the nut shot. Oh my like, gosh. Oh, uh, yes. he he was crying from laughter. I <laughs> just, and I feel so uh, like it's it's. I hate to say it, but nut shots are so like post. They they transcend time. They transcend maturity. 
They're funny, man. Oh, they are. I yeah, I'll never grow out of them. Even if you're trying to think, does Keemer have those? <laughs> yeah. What are you kicking, Bobby? I don't have anything down there. Well, if he did have any, he'd have to get them Keemer removed after that. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Sorry, I do. Uh, I, I do have to that. say this is going to be this like if Samuel Shinton was still alive, this would be his least favorite episode. And if you don't know who that is, I would say Google search it, but Google's evil. So just go online and search Samuel Shinton. If you get the joke, email us. It's funny. I promise. He promises. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So episode three, the twin headed flame beast. The Furu Hoshi Primary School still means a lot to Hikaru and his pals who cherish their childhood memories. Now the school is being attacked with flames by the evil two-headed monster King Pandan. Ultraman Ginga engages the monster with his new fighting technique. We really aren't reading essays like we were with the first series. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you said you have the Blu-ray, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the booklet is so tiny. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you, I don't even know if you got a booklet because a lot of us when we got them, I think the first uh, pressing of them didn't come with the booklet, so they had to send me one. So. Yeah, the Amazon reviews when I looked kind of pushed me to order straight from them. Yeah, because of that. So, yeah, I think I got mine from Best Buy. I can't remember, but yeah, this this episode really I think gets into why I love this show because it's not just silly all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we see that this darkness that the antagonist is um, without revealing who it is because you haven't watched the episodes yet. <laughs> uh, you know, diving into, you know, it's something that can be found in everyone, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and at the end, we see that Yuka, the reason why she allowed herself to be consumed by this darkness was she was lonely. You mm -hmm. know, and that's really it is all these dark hearts and minds are the result of pain, isolation. And I know you just wrote that article on Substack uh, today, you know, just about overworking ourselves during the pandemic. But really, like, you know, you have the people who have overworked themselves, but still like, are at a point of they've they've felt isolated. They felt alone. But, you know, work doesn't stop. Right. You know, we're we're not having solid relationships that we've had. And that's when we find ourselves like not becoming possessed by monsters, but I think we find ourselves at our worst is when we allow that pain and isolation just to really overwhelm us. And it's, it's tough to not let that happen the past year. I mean, I, 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 I know how it feels, you know, I've, I've been there and a lot of us have. So, you know, I just, I watched this episode. I'm like, I mean, I can relate, you know, you, you don't, you don't always realize what's happening until it's too late. Yeah, and I think to your point that um, when we're, we are formed by the systems in which we're molded by, and I think especially knowing a little bit about Japanese culture with overworking and staying too late and letting the impacts of business culture and busyness culture impact the way that we're formed, we do, I, th I think the thing is we don't think about this very much, but we do give ourselves over to patterns of evil and violence when we do conform mm -hmm. too much to these patterns of busyness it's an episode like this that takes it to the supernatural maybe the extraterrestrial that helps us realize like what that might look like a little more exaggerated but we do yeah. have to take some of these as like warnings about the way that we let isolation form us and like mm -hmm. do we take it as seriously as we should and this episode says take it seriously because it's it hurts you and it hurts others and we don't want to think about ourselves that way All right, episode four, The Idol is Ragon. Uh, there we go. Misuzu is selected to replace a model who cancels the photo session at the last minute. Meanwhile, her friend Chigusa secretly longs for becoming an idol while Kenta wants to be a cameraman. Everything is turned upside down when the deep sea alien Ragon shows up to shatter everybody's dream. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think this episode is a little bit of the same kind of idea, but um, this one kind of, uh, the fact that Ragon just kind of shows up and ruins it makes the question a little bit differently. 
But um, I do love the way that this series is um, contrasting how are we controlled by forces outside of us and how are we um, sometimes resistant to them? Like, could mm-hmm. they have followed their dreams of being a model and a cameraman despite Kaiju? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I just kind of, I figured that these two episodes were put together deliberately to kind of show like what, how do external forces in our dreams interact? They can, do we give ourselves over to them and do we resist them when they fight against us or do we like kind of keel over and just let these happen to us? Like what agency do we have in carrying out Hmm. our dreams? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that is really in line with what I was thinking Because, I mean, you know, obviously this show is trying to, you know, talk about, you know, following your dreams. But what happens when, like, our dreams don't seem to come true and our friends get praise and attention and we don't, right? Mm -hmm. What do we do about that? You know, and what we talked about in the last episode, I mean, this is where I feel like this is the kind of stuff that kids do need to be hearing about. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in a day and age with, like, social media where, you know, you may post a selfie that gets a couple likes and your friend posts a picture of whatever, and it gets hundreds, 200, like, and we're constantly comparing ourselves to each other over the silliest things. You know, we, we, uh, it's so uh, these are, these are messages. I mean, I think adults need to hear that too. We're not mm-hmm. exempt from that by any means, but you know, these are the kind of things that this is the new temptations for children in our day and age, you know, teenagers. And I love that Ultraman is touching on that because <laughs> this this is going to affect them into adulthood, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I do love that, you know, I'm, I'm writing here when I was talking about how, you know, Hikaru goes, he starts with the monster and then turns into Ultraman Ginga. Like, I love that variation because, you know, it the suits look great, right? So obviously seeing the variation of monsters find each other and then Ultraman Ginga, you know, and I was like, man, you know, we've done four episodes of this already. And then all of a sudden, you know, Jean Killer comes there at the end. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, well, so much about predictability, right? I forgot yeah, about that. Right. That was such a like a twist. When I knew <laughs> I knew there were robots in the series, but yeah, what a twist. <laughs> How many times are you gonna make that reference? <laughs> uh, hopefully not many more. <laughs> Might get a little stale. Yeah. yeah. I love at the end though, uh, where Chico says, like, I'll become an idol at any cost. It's like, uh, <laughs> Really? Uh, how many how many Philistine scalps will you end up collecting to become an idol? Are you sure? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Foreskins? I was gonna yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> all uh, right. What all right, yeah, I'll edit all that out. Freaking talking about foreskins. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't edit that. Uh episode five, the hater of dreams. Hikaru talks to Misuzu and Chigusa about the time limit Ginga has while he and Ginga are fused into one. This is witnessed by Kenta, who mistakes this as a sign of him being isolated. Catching Kenga's sorry, catching Kenta's anger, <laughs> alien Velki sees this as a chance and sets out his evil plans. Uh, I do have to make a comment. I mean, Mill Creek, I love everything you've done, but like these descriptions are just not edited at all these are these run-on sentences are killing me they are pauline in their length oh man so i remember watching this show for the first time and i was so confused because i thought the spark war was something that happened in previous shows Mm. and it wasn't but like this was really my first exposure to a show like this where like setting up lore in a way because i don't i hadn't really watched anything that done that before um, but I will say, as I was writing the notes for this episode and watching it, I, I had the thought, I'm like, am I the first person in the world to drink a frozen strawberry margarita while watching Ultraman Ginga? That's hilarious. I have frequently had similar thoughts, so I, see, I feel extremely seen and validated that you thought that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Man, I, I'm not going to lie. My wife does homemade margaritas, and they're so good. <laughs> It is an it is a funny point that you bring that up though about the Spark War being in the past of the franchise, not just like a previous show, but it because part of me like I had the same question. I just let it go though. But I think it's really not um it's kind of unusual. The the rebooted time or sorry, Doctor Who puts the time war 
in between the original series and then the reboot with the ninth doctor. And as the show goes on, you learn more about it. But I'm not sure that modern shows would trust us, the viewers, enough with that. The only hmm. reason you'd set up a Spark War is because you have a you have a spinoff coming during season two for the streaming yeah. service. Yeah, yeah. So it's really a testament to what they think about children's TV that they can mm-hmm. talk about this happening in the past. And who knows? Maybe they do. One, maybe it's something like Absolute Conspiracy. I don't know what type of show that is. Like, um, what I, what you'd call the miniseries, but maybe they could do a miniseries about it. I'm sure we'll probably see enough of the events throughout the series that we don't need to watch it again. But yeah, it was, it's a very interesting and kind of ballsy thing to, especially knowing that this is made on the brink of potential bankruptcy to say, oh man, look at all these stories we can tell you, but we, you know, we're telling you this one, you want to, you want to keep watching, you want to see more. I think it's brilliant, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. How do you feel about a uh, alien Valky? Cause he's probably one of my favorite. And he's just like silent, silent. And it's magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I especially like, I, I love when the um, kaiju get a little more fun, but um, it, it, yeah. comparing, p- comparing him with um, the way Kenta reacts, his anger. It's such an mm-hmm. interesting way to compare these characters. Yeah. I will have to say the fact that we see an evil Ultraman at the end. I was like, hmm, <laughs> Tiga, look at that. Yeah. Oh. That's oh, good. yeah. That's good. That's an episode title. <laughs> All right. And we're at the last episode The Battle for Dreams. The mysterious robot, Jean Kilo, and the new transfer student, uh, Tomoya, who controls a gigantic robot. Dot, dot. Who are they? Mm. And who is Tiga Dark, the giant who emerges from the dark and now stands <laughs> between God, so bad? And Jean Kila and Ginga. Here begins the dream battle. I'll confess, I didn't read the descriptions before saying them out loud. I'm yeah, like, oh, I know. Man. It kills it. It's a killer. <laughs> um, man. And the description make this scene, makes this seem like such a like massive mid season finale, which it, I know I mean, it is, but yeah. Um, so I, I'm going to blow your mind, Chris. Are you ready? Okay. Mm-hmm. Kid Taro is the minya of the ultraverse. Oh my gosh. Yes. He is absolutely adorable. Oh, I love that description. <laughs> yeah, Pigmon who? So good. Yeah, exactly. It's Kid Taro. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. But this man. is uh this this episode has the best miniature work ever with Taro in the bed and having mm. a bag of ice on his head. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's literally miniatures. It's great. Yeah. And it's 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 great miniature work combined with um just a real like it's like the review like this show leans so hard into the theme and that's what Mm -hmm. makes a really successful series i think um i and it's sometimes you just need a theme of like dreams but um that's what i love about watching some ultraman shows and some sentai when they have like these big in your face themes and then they just run with it like taking Mm -hmm. someone who has no dreams and saying like I think you dream about killing Ginga. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> or that's like the how making him come up with, you know, having a dream to begin with. You mm-hmm. know, like that's what I love. It's not that that is his dream, but Hikaru inspires him to have a dream. Mm-hmm. Right? Like how powerful is that that you can inspire someone to like change their life even if it's a kind of silly reason, right? And it's not even just that like it's um when you have a superhero and they make you want to be better because they're super powered, it's normal people inspire yeah. each other. They're absolutely these, this is a group of friends. And it's the same reason that I think Parks and Rec took off so well at America, is we like seeing people like each other. And mm-hmm. I really love that in the show. Yeah. Yeah. My my final thought, apart from the fact that the Jean Buster was coming from his crotch. Uh, <laughs> is the fact I, that mm-hmm. with Ken and Taro, like it really hit me now. I, I was a dad when I watched it last year, 
but just the fact that Ken Wanataro did not just be like him, but to be better. I mean, that's something I've thought about with my son lately is like, you know, praying and yeah, hoping and praying he's a better man than I am. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to be like me. I want him to be better. Better. Yes. So, yeah, definitely can relate to that. All right. Man, it's in it. It's weird to get going so quick. I know. It's like we're but. just getting started. And oh, well, these awards, at least on my end, are going to look a little different. So, okay. Um, Excited for that. I have already put it's me pushing the boundaries on what these awards do and mean is not new. But mm -hmm. um, let's move into the most beautiful kaiju first because I. <sighs> There were some fantastic kaiju in this one. Um, I really liked um, Valky, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I I don't know how people feel about these suits. I almost, you know, you're going to tweet me anyway, so tweet me. I loved Ginga's suit. I, I just, if I'm going to comment on beautiful suit work, I really like this Ginga suit. But he's not a kaiju. I know, I know. I already said I'm pushing the boundaries. That's why. Uh, that's why I that, threw the Valky out there. That's not even. But I did want to say it. at some it's point like in this episode, you leaped over. Yeah, but that's why I wanted to say at some point in this episode that I really like this Ginga. No, the Ginga so. suit's awesome. I'm I'm right there with you. See, I was tied between Alien Valky and Kimmerman because mm -hmm. Kimmerman's great, but I had to go with Doragori. So. I experienced Doragori for the first time with Ultraman Mabius, and I just love the pseudo mothy look to the kaiju. And just the fact that I'm so excited to go into Ultraman Ace, which is where Doragori is from. So just the design itself, it's probably my favorite out of this set. Well, of course sure. it was. That's why I chose it. So, yeah. But it was yeah. close between Balky and uh, uh, Keeperman for sure. Yeah, I liked I I liked it a lot. This one... I like that these push a little bit more on just like, I get it sometimes big lobster funny, mm -hmm. but these were a little more creative, a little more alien. So yeah, a little more sympathetic there, but all right. Monster graveyard award. I had to go with Keemer man. I mean, that was just such a fun way to end the episode, but I mean, I was sitting here and I'm like some of these awards, it's just, it's going to be tough because they don't fit the mold of the original. <laughs> so like, yeah, None of no. the monsters really died. Theoretically, so. no one's getting like cut in half or exploding. No. Yeah. No. So that's what that was. I, that's kind of what my comment was about how these are going to be different. And I think that's okay. It's going to push us to discuss them a little differently. And yeah. But yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the, um, I enjoyed that too. But um, yeah, I really did just enjoy in general the way the the, the different take on defeating kaiju in the series as a whole. But so do you have the an Kimer answer? the Kimer fight? <laughs> the I, Kimer well, okay. Yeah, that whole fight. I thought I I've said it once. I'll say it every episode until you get sick and tired of hearing it. It it made them fun to watch. Mm -hmm. It made them interesting. So just for that alone, it gets some. It gets a little boosted credit. Yeah. So. What did you do for uh, the how in the heck did he get away with that award? Yeah. <laughs> the Jean Killer from the crotch. <laughs> Wait, what? The one we had just talked about. Yeah. Um, but how I does know, that it's work not, with the it's transformation? It's about Ultraman transforming. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> it's so funny. I... These, I don't know. I didn't think that many, many of these were um, as funny as some of the original series were. Did you find yeah, them as? No. Well, I no. That was the thing is like there weren't really anything here because they already all know that he's Ultraman. Right. So, right. So he's not like hiding it. Um, no, if anything, but, the whole the concept of how he becomes Ultraman is really interesting too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I that is kind of one of the things that like. Um, when you're coming up with a new show, how does he transform? How does he get his powers? Again, I just the fact that he gets them from the vinyl toys is so funny. <laughs> so maybe yeah. the question isn't how does he get away with that, but how do they get away with that? And they being Super Aya, how did they yeah. get away with showing a whole show based on their toys becoming the superpowers? Hey, oh, 
Chris asking the real questions. <laughs> All right. Aim for its butthole award. So I had a winner and a runner up. Okay. I'm just going to read my winner because I feel like if I read the runner up, people are going to be like, why don't you choose that one? Mm -hmm. So my winner was Ultraman Taro when he repeatedly says, I want to get large soon. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Followed by Alien Valky when he says, oh, yes. Ultraman is very strong. I almost have a crush on him. <laughs> it just yes. made me think of Teen Girl Squad. Yes. I have a crush on every Ultraman. I have a crush on every boy. Yes. Okay. I thank you. You didn't <laughs> you can choose that as your run-up because that was for the same Teen Girl Squad reason, my winner. Oh man, that's awesome. I <laughs> it, it made me laugh, period. And as I was writing it down, I was like, this is also a Homestar Runner reference. So I'm like underlining it to make sure that I remember it. My new um, pre-show ritual is that sometime the day before we record, just watch a few Homestar Runner videos. Put a few in the tank. There um, you go. But yeah, how about your favorite episode? I I just, the battle, the battle for dreams, I think. Um, okay. The way it leans into the theme so well, the way that it makes such mm -hmm. an interesting um, fight scene, the way that the characters interact, and um, it's not even just like the main characters interact. It's not even just like the heroes interact, but like every character does something to every other character. Like hmm. this is this this episode I think is one of the ones where you see that you can't just substitute anybody for anyone. Like you can't just pluck a character out of the episode. It's a different no. show. You can't just pluck someone else in. It's a different show. And so for that, I had to choose the sixth one. Wow, that was a much better reason than mine. I don't know. Yeah, so I went with episode two, A Midsummer Night's Dream. And I mean, I would agree with you. I think episode number six really is probably the best out of all of them. But this wasn't the first episode of Ultraman I watched with Jasper. But I remember this really being one of the first ones where I think he fell in love with the show. And that helped me fall in love with it as well. Hmm. Uh, and it's not just the nut shot. It's just <laughs> the it humor in it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it helps. But yeah, it's just the humor and just the overall tone and the writing and the acting. It's yeah, it was definitely just one of those things where I knew at this point, like, OK, this is a show that we're going to be watching together. Mm -hmm. So, Which I think the nice thing about the way that we do this show, if I can, is like when we're not doing a depth analysis and historical research, we're allowed to have some of these like sentimental ones. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to bet what, by the time we do Z, I'm going to have a few more sentimental ones in the episode discussions than mm -hmm. normal. But yeah, I did want to make sure that I had at least one like good answer when I told <laughs> episode six. So I'm glad. I'm glad you liked it. I did. I Bye. did. All right, Chris. Yes. Um, so next. Oh, you mean the theological? I'm joking. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in this one, with all the characters have dreams, it's like in the Bible, there's so many characters who have dreams. Like Joseph of Genesis has dreams that he would rule over his brothers. And it's actually through the dreams that he interprets that he saves a man's life and tells a man that he's doomed. And it's from there that he takes um, second in charge over the whole world. And then even Jesus adopted dead Joseph also has dreams that protect Jesus' life. And then uh, Pilate's wife has dreams that, you know, don't touch Jesus because this man hasn't done anything wrong. And so basically what I'm saying is every character in Ultraman Ginga got dreams from God. And God's the one that caused Ginga to happen. Checkmate atheist. Checkmate atheist. God caused Ginga. <laughs> <laughs> As always, Chris, thank you for that. If our listeners feel so inclined to tithe to this ministry of proclaiming the gospel of Ultraman, 10%, 20%, 50%. Whatever gets us our jet the fastest. Yes. Our, our, I mean, to I mean, the Lord. Come on. Yes. You know where to donate. <laughs> So what are we doing next time, Chris? We finish Ginga with another uh, couple of episodes. So make sure I think there's plenty of time. If you haven't started the series, you can probably 
it's only it's only 12 total right 12 or 13 so yep there's 12. plenty of time to watch the series and join in with us we'd love to have some discussions about that um and the deal on the dvd if i can and even the digital code i'm sure it's really good because you get both the series and the movie right mm-hmm. so it, we, yeah there's uh you get both shows a movie and a little special yep. yeah and we're not we're not paid to we're not paid to po- like say this. So let me let me say this like with it with like pretty sincerity. It's a pretty good deal for like twenty bucks for all you get mm-hmm. and for the show. So that's I mean just to reiterate that is one of our goals is that this is stuff you can watch and you can watch easily. So correct. But yeah, we will be doing episode seven through twelve, a monster competition. And concluding with your future. My so, future? How bleak. I know. We'll have to talk <laughs> about that off the air. Uh, thank you for listening to our podcast. While it's easy to get caught up with reviews and such, really just want to hear from you. And we're not joking. We, we do. So whether it's sharing your thoughts on an episode we covered, if we made a mistake, or you just want to chat, Many. feel free to send us an email at atrashespod at protonmail.com. Or you can head over to atrashespod.com where you'll find our contact form for listener feedback or even prayer requests. Until next time. It really inspired me. Like, okay, we're going to stick with this and we're going to keep doing it. And it wasn't just the, oh, hey, babe, how are you? Oh, the ball. Sorry. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. I forgot. I truly don't know what's going on here. Oh, he's got a medicine ball in his back. He's handing the medicine ball to his wife. And I'm pretty sure they're smooching in the background. I get here just big. That was my mouth, not their mouth. Um, I think maybe what they're going to do is teach Jasper, their five-year-old, how to stand on this ball and learn how to balance, maybe power up his core a little bit, get him a uh, six-pack at five years old. Um, he still has a return. I'm pretty sure they're having a, um, pretty sure they're having a deep conversation about medicine balls and Ultraman Ginga. Anyway, while I'm here, while I have you guys... Oh, he's coming back. Pretend I didn't say anything. Tell him I was What's entertaining. Hmm? What'd you say? Nothing. Oh, okay. Just I'll talking to, to the listen listeners. Later. What? <laughs> I'll have to listen later. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll put that at the end. So, <laughs> yeah. You might want to listen before we put it at the end. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's let's start over there. Okay. Uh, thanks, Chris, for that. <clears throat> That's the sound that sleep paralysis demons make when you're trying to dream. <laughs> Someone's in your house. <laughs> it's me. What was it? Uh, the the guy from yeah, the home starter. Triplers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's no, no. It wasn't that. He said, a, "Come on in here." <laughs> Did you, Did you, you used jibbly? to be in a screamo band by any chance? No, <laughs> didn't think so. I do like food anymore. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So next as always, up, oh. oh sorry. Well, as always, say, Chris. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce the end of that, where you'll find our contact form for listener feedback, or mm, where you'll find our list. Mm. I don't like food anymore. <laughs>